What's up guys? Today we're going to be changing out a fuel rail pressure sensor that is common on the newer Fords and what they use these for is so they can have full control over the fuel system, very precise control over the fuel pressure and they made the systems returnless by varying the duty cycle to the fuel pump. So these actually fail more often than you think. Now this one we're changing out because there was a problem with the lightning strike and it took out the sensor. It's a very sensitive electronic device and these are very easy to get to on just about every engine that is out there. There are a few precautions I want to go over before you ever pull one of these off. They look so simple to change out. You want to change them out and when the engine is nice and cool, it's been off for a while so there's no pressure buildup in the system. You may think, okay, the engine's been off for two, three hours. Yeah, it's still summertime. Guess what, the engine heat is just making that fuel pressure inside of the rail really like skyrocket inside of there from the heat soak uh, from it sitting there. So it'll actually spray out and be all over everything and it can actually start a, a fire on there. So make sure you wait for it to get nice and cool and let it sit for hours upon hours so everything's nice and cool and we can take this off with minimal fuel leakage and of course be safe while we're doing it. Now just about every vehicle, this sensor is very easy to get to. I'm sure there's some that are behind the, uh, the intake and they're underneath the intake on there. But basically you just look for the fuel rail and then you'll find the sensor. It's gonna look very, very similar to this. They'll all have a, a reference uh, vacuum line going to them and a connector that looks just like that. They're all the same style like that and it'll have two bolts uh, that is holding it into the fuel rail on there. So it's follow the fuel rail around and you'll know right away if you have one of these sensors on your vehicle or not. Okay, so we're over here in the engine compartment of this 05 Ford Escape, 2.3 liter. Of course, it only has one fuel rail, so it's very easy right up here in the front uh, to find it on here. Now, it can be in the end of the fuel rail, be in the middle like this one. It doesn't matter, it'll be, it'll be bolted right on top like this. So we're gonna go ahead on a cool, cool engine and we're going to pull the vacuum line off of there. Okay, and use a pick something like this so we can move it off of there without splitting anything because these, these, these lines get really brittle after a while being in the heat under the hood here. Then we're going to disconnect the electrical connector. Okay, and it's not totally necessary to disconnect the negative on the battery, but it is a good idea. I generally don't, but I've been doing this for so freaking long it doesn't really matter anymore to me. Uh, so we're going to pull any harnesses out of the way that may be in the way so we don't pinch them going back down and clamping it down. And then underneath it, okay, we're going to take some rags that you can throw out, paper towels, stuff like that. And we're going to put it underneath this one here. So there's going to be some fuel spillage either way. Okay, now you're going to want to pull these off with hand tools only. And the reason being is any kind of electric little impacts or something like this, they're brushed DC motors, so they're going to have arcing when that brush goes over that commutator face on there. And you don't want sparks next to fuel vapors for sure. So that's a given, but many people don't think about that. And I want to put that out there. So we're going to start pulling us off of here. Now, just in case there is fuel pressure in here, what we're going to do is we're going to take it off. Crack the bolts, okay? Loosen them, brake torque on them, and do it evenly on both sides, okay? And what you can do is back them off a little bit. Make sure it's still in there, okay? And if you're worried about fuel pressure being in there, leave them in, and you can start wiggling it until it pops up and out of there. If there's any kind of pressure in there, there we go, it would, it would have sprayed out by now. Take these bolts, put them off to the side. They are a certain size. Okay, don't lose them. And then you could take it off the rest of the way. If you're really worried about fuel pressure still, put a rag over it and then grab it, lift straight up. Okay, looks something like that. And then same thing going back in. Like I said, it's very simple. But you wanna make sure that this thing is not clogged up in any sort of way. Uh, you wanna make sure the mounting surface on here is nice and clean, your bolt holes, all that. And then you're going to want to take your new sensor, put a little bit of grease, I mean just a little bit, okay, on the O-ring on there. So it slides in easily and doesn't tear. And then we're simply going to push it back down in there. It's going to be hard 
to push it in there a little bit because the O-ring is so plush on there, which is a good thing. Make sure it's fully seated, just drop down and fully seat without you having to press on it any further on there. At that point, you can start lining these bolts up on here. Do one at a time uh, before you tighten it down. So you make sure that one lines up all the way and we don't start cross threading. And then you can simply tighten them down. Now, hand tight with a quarter inch like this, is just fine on there. There's brass inserts in there for strength and it's not going nowhere. And then we'll put the vacuum line back on, put it on nice and straight, push it straight onto there. You don't want to break that nipple off of there. These sensors are ultra expensive, uh, but you can get them a lot cheaper on Amazon. I'll link to that down below. And then over here, your connector is the last part on here. Make sure it's free of corrosion, the little pins inside of there. I like to put a little bit of dielectric grease in there, electrical grease, uh, just to protect the pins in there. And then we're going to clip this in until it snaps like that. Let me get our rags out of here. And what you want to do is make sure there's any fuel spilled anywhere on here that you clean it up okay so we're going to turn the key on and we're going to pressurize the fuel system a couple times and make sure there's no leaks before we ever um you know put the the start the engine and start getting uh the heat going here and all that stuff where it can be potentially dangerous for a fire so we're just going to turn the key a couple times pressurize it let it sit come back and inspect and then we'll be safe to start the engine so as you can see, changing the sensor out is very, very simple, but you need to follow those precautions so that you don't get a face full of fuel or start your vehicle on fire. Make sure it's cold engine, make sure that you're using only hand tools, make sure you got plenty of rags to soak up all the fuel in case it does spray out, loosen those screws, let the pressure come out if there is any, and be safe about it. Now the other thing I wanna talk about is the sensor brand itself. You may be tempted to go aftermarket because this sensor is quite expensive. It's like $193 for the sensor. And I think my price from the dealer was like $143 for my company. You can buy the same exact sensor, Motorcraft, the exact, you know, exact same sensor that you buy at the dealership that's calibrated just for your vehicle for $93 or $97 shipped to your door. Totally cheap and it's the exact same price as the aftermarket's online also. So why would you not get the Motorcraft once made just for your vehicle? Not to mention a lot of people are using the aftermarkets and they're having problems with them still. And what's the point of going through all this and changing it out and paying a lot of money just to have the problem all over again? So I definitely urge you to use Motorcraft. And like I said on Amazon, they're the cheapest. I'll link down below to this one so you guys can get a reference and then you look up your vehicle from there on the, the buyer's guide on there and you can save a lot of money and put the right parts in there. So hopefully this helps. I know this is kind of scary going into the fuel system. Just be ultra safe about it. Do it in a well-ventilated area, and you could do it in, in about five minutes.